Welcome back into the film room. I'm your host, Eric Turner. In this Cover One film room feature, we're going to take a look at guard Osiris Torrance against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I thought we saw some really good technique, especially hand technique and use of hands from Torrance in this game as a pass blocker. But more importantly, we saw some high-level plays from the shoulders up, that pre- to post-snap processing that really excites me about his game going into his rookie season. So without further ado, let's jump into the film. One of my favorite parts of his game against the Steelers was his grip in the run and the pass game. And what I mean by that is on this run, you're going to see the tackle pull. Brown is pulling, wrapping around, and Torrance is on the backside. And that defender, he's blocking, wants to escape to go make a play in the hole as the running back gets north and south. But because of the grip from Torrance on this play right here, look, boom, clamps that inside hand, that left hand. And that allows that running back to get through that hole cleanly without the defensive tackle being disruptive at the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see many downhill runs like we saw last week. Plays that had very nice combination blocks to create this kind of displacement. But this was one of them between Torrance and Brown. It's a duo run combination essentially between Torrance and Brown right here. And Torrance is mainly the guy that is supposed to get the leverage, the hand leverage, as Cromer says. And then the driver, or the guy that gets the sled moving, is Brown to create that displacement. They do a good job of that here. But unfortunately, on the backside, Kincaid gets taken to the woodshed from Minka Fitzpatrick. You see him take the fight to Kincaid and blow this play up. This was actually set up to be a really nice gain here by Murray. But again, it started at the line of scrimmage between Spencer Brown and Torrance to create that initial movement. Another play where Torrance shows off really good grip. Wide alignments. I talked about it last week. I want to see him play against wide alignments a lot. So you're going to see defensive tackle is basically outside shade, a slight outside shade of Brown. And then the edge rusher is way out here, making it very difficult for the Bills right side of their offensive line, Torrance and Brown. You can see Torrance fire out of his stance, feign that hand. And what that does, it, it uncovers the pass rush plan by that defensive tackle. So instead of staying out wide, what's he do? He tries darting inside, and Torrance makes it look easy. Watch how he feigns the hand, inside moves coming. Look at that left hand punching already. Post leg is already upfield, punching with that inside hand, gripping and locking on, and then boom, you can see land the left, land the right, rep is over. So really good work with his hands on this play. Something, again, that we've wanted to see him continuously work on and get better at. Great job of shutting down that inside rush and then creating that stalemate, creating that nice pocket for the quarterback there inside for Matt Barkley. Similar rep here by Torrance, wide alignment, not much of a pass rush from the defensive tackle, but a great job of creating that stalemate at the line of scrimmage and one heck of a throw and catch from Sherfield. So wide alignment, Brown uses that post hand right there, helps deter upfield pressure or rush from that defensive tackle. But watch Torrance get his hands inside, lock on. There's that grip. You see the right hand in the shoulder pads. Great work there. And at this point, Torrance's weight is a little over his toes, just a little bit. But watch how important that hand placement is as that defender tries push pulling him and running back inside. Watch the recovery right there. But you can see it's because of the hand placement. As long as he gets his hands on that guy and locks on, he can recover late in a rep because of it. So right there, you can see him just immediately shut that rep down. So great work by Torrance on this play, kicking out to the wide alignment, landing those hands, and then locking down the pass rusher. There's a lot to uncover on this simple play. Now, it is an incomplete pass, thanks to the pressure of the Steelers off the edge and left side of the offensive line. But let's watch Torrance on this play. So the Steelers have a tilted nose, and that nose is right over the snap hand of Morris. And Morris is responsible for this gap. So he needs help initially from Torrance here. And you're going to see Torrance eyes outside here, but use that drag hand, that post hand, that inside hand right there. Now, he can improve in this area because that post or drag hand should be inside the frame. And again, that's to give Morris some time to get in front of his guy and pick him up. So Torrance can do a better job of doing that. But you can see as 98 starts to get upfield and shoot into his gap, 
he's there. And it's really nice vertical set with that post and he's getting back, he's getting back, he's calculating that angle. And then as 98 commits to the gap, he's able to pick him up and secure the right side of the offensive line. So good work by Torrance here, helping out Morse. He just needs to improve his technique a little bit with that, that drag hand, that post hand, that inside hand to help Morse out a little bit. But either way, Morse locked it down, Torrance locked it down, the right side of the offensive line locked it down. Now, I don't like the depth of the drop by Josh Allen. He's under center. This is a seven-step drop. He gets to 10 yards. That's very stressful for tackles, especially when they're on an island by themselves. It allows right there. You can see there's a little hop at the top of the drop. Seven's right there, and then you see him hop back a little bit. 10 yards is really deep for a drop from a quarterback, especially from under center, something the Bills don't do a lot of. So while it is an incomplete pass, I do think Dorsey and the offensive staff were trying some new things from under center, especially these deep drops. Uh, but you can see it just didn't work out here. It kind of negates the play here and is what leads to this incompletion. Besides the fact that Josh Allen is an alien, this is actually a really nice play from Torrance, helping out his teammates. So initially, defensive tackle, inside shade on him. So you see him protect that gap, help Morse get over. But look where his eyes go as soon as he knows and feels Morse get his hands on the defensive tackle. He is looking to help Spencer Brown, and Spencer Brown needed it. Watt uncovers this wicked spin move back inside and is right in the face of Josh Allen, which is pretty incredible seeing as how it's basically a one-step drop from shotgun. But because Torrance had his head on a swivel, he's there to shut down that inside lane to buy some time for Josh Allen to work his magic. He does, runs back upfield, cuts to the middle of the field, and then here comes Gabe Davis on a deep in-breaking route, and he's able to complete it. So good work by Torrance on this play. Some really good help technique and awareness in this game. This is one of those plays where if he's not there to help Brown, I think Josh Allen is sacked, and who knows? I mean, Watt would be coming right at him, and who knows what would happen on that play. So good work by Torrance of helping his teammate on this play. Similar play to what we saw a few plays ago. Torrance helping Morse with that drag hand, but the technique's a lot better here. So look at where the hand is this time. Inside the frame, good work. Eyes are out wide to 98. This is Torrance's gap, so anyone that shows there is his man. But as you can see, 98, Leal does a good job of breaking down and prying the edge open there. And that's what's going to happen with some of these plays, especially when you have that tilted nose tackle on Morse and Torrance is having to help with that drag hand and then vertical set backwards and try to calculate the angle of where that pass rusher 98 is going to meet him. If that guy uses power, he can sometimes pry open the outside edge and that guy will have a short edge on Torrance. You kind of see that here, but Josh is able to get rid of the ball. Another one of those deep drops from under center. Really good throw to Stefan Diggs from the left hash. But these are the things that we have to keep an eye on when you're studying Torrance and the Bills offensive guards. Are they creating short edges? Because it, as you can see, the edge rusher is way out here. So Brown is kind of out of the picture. So in this type of pass blocking protection, Torrance is essentially setting the width of this pocket. He is essentially a quasi tackle on this play. That short edge is given. And that guy's right in the face of Josh Allen. Here's one rep from Torrance where the pass rusher started inside but then worked outside and won the edge. This is a terrible throw from Barkley. He should not have even thrown this. But watch Torrance. Inside shade, that guy spikes out wide into that gap, and he gets his hands on him, but then he gets a little too much weight over his toes, tries leaning on him. But it's a really nice rip from this pass rusher. Seals that leverage. And once again, that edge is short now, and that guy wins the edge. Technically, Torrance was beaten on this play. This is called a beat. He had two of them in this game. This is one of them. But for him, luckily for him, the ball was out, so it didn't really count 
as a pressure, but he did lose this rep. Just another thing to keep an eye on, that outside edge. It's going to be very difficult for pass rushers, regardless of where they line up, to beat him inside or down the cylinder, right down the middle of him. They're going to have to beat him outside, and it's because of things like this, where when guys use speed and win that edge, they're able to get around him because if his hands aren't on the guy and allowing him to recover, he just doesn't have the feet to run a guy wide of the spot. Here's the second play from Torrance that was technically a beat, but didn't register a pressure because the ball was out. And the ball was out because of a sick route from Dalton Kincaid. Watch him set up this in-breaking route out wide from the slot. Makes it look like a stick or out route, but look at the flexibility in his ankles. Sets that guy up. That guy takes the cheese, and then he just smoothly breaks back to the middle of the field. No, back to Torrance. I like this play because, as McDermott talked about, it's different spacing. It's not just a 4-3. It's not just a nickel, even front. He's uncovered, so he has to uncover who is going to be rushing into his gap and who is his man. This guy opens him up immediately, and that's what I'm talking about with these wide alignments and wide rushes and speed rushes is that Torrance has to open up quickly. He can't kick slide because he doesn't have that type of athleticism to – finish near the line of scrimmage, he has to open up, get his hands on the guy, and try to recover. So while that pass rusher doesn't get near the quarterback and the ball is out, these are the type of plays and pass rushes that we need to watch Torrance because those edges, those short edges, are going to be there when you see power to speed guys or just straight speed pass rushers. And so he's going to have to do a better job of running his feet while he has the hands on the guy so that these don't become an issue when defenses try to scheme and attack the pass protection, the right side of the Bills' offensive line. Easy play here from Torrance. Wide alignment, up the field rusher, not much explosiveness to this pass rusher here. And you can see Torrance just get his hands on the guy and just keep him out wide. Nowhere near the passer on this play, Josh is able to stand in the pocket and get rid of the ball. All right, on to my favorite three plays from Torrance in this game. Uncovered on this play, you see the no tackle heads up on Morse. But on the snap, that guy spikes into the A gap. The offensive line is sliding this way. So Morse uses that drag hand, buys Torrance some time. But you can see right off the snap, Torrance is having to open up, get his hands on that pass rusher. But watch the reset. Watch him not just lean on the guy. Watch him move his feet. Look at him reset. Now watch the body positioning. Boom. Gets his hips around, gets his feet around. Locks him up near the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, there's pressure off the edge. Josh goes into scramble drill mode and tries making something out of nothing. But this is a special rep. Little help from Morris, yes. But good job of Torrance getting his hands on the guy, but not stopping there, not just leaning on him, but getting his feet and hips around, getting his body in position to put himself between the quarterback and the pass rusher, and then watch the hand placement. I mean... It is sublime on this play. See the right hand right there on the shoulder pad? Look at the left hand right here inside the frame. Feet and body are in place, and he just runs his feet, locks that guy down, and secures the interior of that pocket. Now on to some high-level stuff from Torrance and Spencer Brown on the right side here. So balls on the left hash, and to the wide side of the field, to the open side of the field, the safety is capping the nickel so he's basically right over the nickel there and more times than not that means that nickel is blitzing off the edge you can see spencer brown pointing it out immediately he sees it now the steelers try to disguise it a little better but they showed it a little too soon and then you see that boundary safety head to the post there so the steelers send a guy off the edge brown picks up that guy torrance picks up the edge rusher and the bills complete another pass to Dalton kincaid on a filthy route over the middle of the field. Once again, one of those routes where he's he's running an option route, setting up that two-way go and getting leverage on that guy to the middle of the field. But I love the recognition and awareness by Spencer Brown and Torrance on this play. So here it is from the end zone angle. Great work by Brown, Bates pointing it out, and then you see Torrance getting his eyes out there because with Brown having to pick up this guy off the edge to the wide side of the field, that means that Torrance has to get all the way out here and pick up this edge rusher right there. And he does a great job of doing that on this play. 
again, protects that inside gap and then lets this kind of uncover right here and then identifies his man and then watch him lock him down. Look at the hand placement. Absorb the power from that edge rusher going speed to power. Again, you're not going to just beat him down the cylinder like, like that. I mean, just look at the grip. Boom. Locked up. Rep over. Really good pickup by Brown and Torrance on this play. And that allows Barkley to stand in there and allow Kincaid to work his magic with his route running to get open to move the chains. Here's a similar play to what you saw in the last one. Another play where Brown and Torrance really win this rep from the shoulders up prior to the snap. Good awareness by those two pointing out the possible rush coming off the edge. And that allows Barkley to scan down the field. That allows Hardy to uncover on this third down. But the Bills to pick it up and really set up a nice pocket for the quarterback. But I just love the recognition from Brown and Torrance on this play. And the execution, of course. So on the snap, they're getting that guy coming off the edge. This edge rusher is spiking inside. And Torrance just locks this dude down. But some kudos to Brown too. Drag hand, again. Drag hand is important. That buys Torn some time to kick out wide, to get in position, to get to the proper angle. And the nonverbal communication from Torrance here is important too. See him touch and overlap Brown on the shoulder pad right there. And that tells Brown, hey, I'm in position. You can kick out and go get your guy. So now that rusher spikes inside and the hand placement and power from Torrance on this play. Boom, he anchors right there. But watch how he... Takes all that power and all that speed from that rusher and just essentially eliminates it, picks him up off the turf, and takes all of that leverage and power away in his hands, with his base, and just shuts down that pass rusher. And once again, sets up a very nice pocket here. So I know a lot of people were down on Spencer Brown in this game. He had some high level reps here. And especially if you're talking between the young guard. Torrance and himself like this is some good stuff these are the type of things that translate very well on Sundays and winning from the shoulders up not just physically executing on the field you want to see this type of processing pre to post net between these two guys two very young players that the Bills are going to rely on a lot this season at this point I think it's safe to say that the starting right guard for the Buffalo Bills come week one of the regular season is going to be Osiris Torrance He's had a very good preseason. He stacked two games on top of each other with a good amount of reps and experience, but also some high-level processing, but also flashing some of those physical tools that led to Brandon Bean drafting him in the second round. If you like that content, please smash that like button, leave us a comment, and subscribe to the Cover One YouTube channel. And better yet, if you want behind-the-scenes content, access to the Cover One Slack channel, a great community that we've built for Cover One, and behind the scenes content and, and nuggets and news before it hits the newswire, become an insider for 60 bucks for the year. You'll get our custom t-shirt that we change every year and a decal from Cover One and all of the in-depth content that you expect from our network. Thanks for joining me in this film room feature on Guard Osiris Torrance.